So just a summary of titration curves here. So when you hear a strong base, uh, think about 13 to 14. Um, so 14 is the max, a strong um, acid, one's, one to the max, so about one to two, including uh, ignoring super acids and so forth. So just as a, a general rule of thumb, uh, weak bases and acids are a little bit more difficult um, to define. So nine to, nine to 11, uh, three to five generally. Uh, and so when you're looking at, um, so you look for a seven here. So when you're looking to determine whether you've got a titration curve that's a weak acid or base, you look at the, the pattern here. Uh, if it looks like this, uh, then you've got a weak acid plus a strong base. If you've got this, you've got a strong acid to a strong base. Uh, if you've got this, you've got a weak acid and a weak base, which the syllabus is uh, ignoring. Uh, and what have I missed? Uh, this one here. So that's a strong acid and a weak base. Okay, so this is a titration of a strong acid and a strong base. You can see it's almost up to 13 here, and this one starts at about 1. Um, and so what you have here is uh, all of a sudden when you get close to being neutralized, uh, there's a massive jump. Uh, so there's equal amounts uh, there's of acid and base here. Um, and so that has been neutralized. Uh, and then you get to the excess OH minuses here uh, and reaches the pH of the strong base. Uh, and you've started out with lots of H pluses down here, which is the pH of the strong acid. Uh, and so the equivalence point is where the reaction has been completed. Uh, and so you can use either of these indicators uh, to indicate that because it has a huge pH jump from uh, 2 to 11 basically and so that gives you a huge range of indicators that can detect changes between 2 and 11 and uh, that will be the answer there so at somewhere between 40 uh, mils all of a sudden it changes color because um, there's a huge pH change. Now we're going to get into the weak acids and weak bases um, and so as there'll be buffers uh, not for the previous one strong acid strong base but just weak acids and uh, strong bases or weak bases, strong acids. And so the difference with these things are because there's a weak acid and you're partially neutralizing it, uh, you're creating an acid plus a salt, which is a definition of a buffer. Uh, and so at the equivalent, at half the equivalence point here, uh, you will have half of the acid and half the conjugate base, uh, which is a perfect situation for a buffer. So that's defined as the buffer region where the curve is flat. Um, and more specifically, at half the equivalence point, you've got exactly half um, the acid plus conjugate base for this one. Uh, and that, subbing into the equation, that turns pH into pKa. Uh, and so basically, if you know the half equivalence point, the pH of the half equivalence point will be the pKa because the conjugate base, the acid and conjugate base are equal, and therefore the, the acid dissociation constant. Uh, will end up working out to equal pH. Um, and so, uh, the hydrogen ion concentration, I should say, and then take the logs, uh, negative logs of those, all right, as uh, in the previous video. Um, and so this all applies to um, a weak base, uh, strong acid uh, curve, which is coming up in the next uh, video, uh, next slide as well. So let's move on to those curves. And we have here the weak base. Uh, strong acid, so you can see that this is about 1. Uh, this one's uh, sort of quite high actually, 11. That's uh, ammonia, uh, even though it's a weak base. And so you have the equivalence point here, 5.27. Uh, and so half of this volume here, 40, should be about 20. Uh, and so that gives you the pKa of the acid re read across here. So that's the buffer region. Um, and as you'll see, uh, phenylphthalein uh, detects pH changes uh, from about 10 to 8 here from this graph. Uh, and as you see, it's nowhere near neutralized in that region. Uh, so we need methyl red in that case uh, because the pH jump is going to be uh, much more detectable because the pH jump at the equivalence point is only going to be detected uh, at the pH range where methyl red changes its color. And if we just have a jump to the data book, let's just have a check of that. So let's see if methyl red um, does have uh, a pKa that's similar to 5.27. And so here we go, methyl red 5.7, uh, the range is 4.4 to 6.2. And so 5.7 is within that range. So methyl red will work. 
uh, and just out of curiosity, pink to yellow. So let's just check that as well. Um, so you can see that's pink to yellow because the data book was set acid to base. So yellow to pink in this case. Now moving on to uh, weak acid, strong base, uh, similar, similar situation. The equivalence point is here. So if you look at phenylphthalein, uh, the pKa will be somewhere around the pH range. Uh, it should be within the pH range. So it goes from clear to pink. Uh, and we take half of that equivalence point over here and we can find the pKa of the acid. Uh, and so that's a weak acid uh, and that goes up to a strong base, which is like uh, close to 13. Uh, and this one is about a three, four. So just working through a problem now, make sure you have a look at uh, many different types of these problems because there's many different ways to word it and to do it. Um, and so what we're looking at here is standard solution of uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, and so we've grabbed some vinegar and 200, we've diluted it one in 10. So we've grabbed 25 mils of it, made it up to 250 mils. Uh, then we then took uh, 20 mils of that. So we've got uh, 25 mils in here, uh, made it up to 250. Uh, we then took out 20 mils uh, and then we did our titration. So you'll get some sort of uh, titration curve. So if we have a, a weak base and then we're adding acid, strong acid to it, uh, so that reading there will give us uh, 20 point uh, here, uh, 20.6 mils there. That's how much of the sodium hydroxide it took. Uh, and so what is the percent ethanol? Um, it really should say volume per volume because that's the answer that we're giving anyway. Uh, that's the density. So density equations down there, it's probably expected to be known if that was the question, but they might ask for a different finish off at the end. Uh, so the first part is very common, certainly. Uh, and so what do we do? We have to work out uh, if we use 20.6 mils of sodium hydroxide, uh, we have to know how many moles that is. Uh, and then we can work out, because uh, they're all 1 is to 1 is to 1, we can out work out the number of moles of sodium uh, ethanoic acid then vinegar in that diluted solution and then uh, do a calculation to work out the original. Uh, and so you can see that here um, we've used... 20.6 mils here of um, sodium, one mole of sodium hydroxide. So that gives us 0 0.0206 uh, moles of sodium hydroxide. The ratio is one is to one, so that makes that easy. So it's the same number of moles of vinegar. And so we have this equation here. Uh, and so we have this many moles in this many mils. Uh, and so that concentration of that uh, aliquot, that, that portion that we took out is 1.03 molar of acetic acid. Okay, now um, that original uh, solution uh, was diluted one in 10. So we need to times that by 10. Uh, and so the actual original concentration of the acid, of the acid was 10.3 molar. Okay, so that's, that's um, sort of finished, uh, but this is asked for a little bit more. Uh, so there's 10.3 moles per litre. Uh, what's the percentage of that? So if you've got 10.3 moles, um, uh, so acetic acid is 60 grams per litre, so that gives us 172 grams. Uh, and the volume of 172 grams, uh, density is mass on volume, so volume will equal mass divided by density. So it's 172 grams divided by 1.05, which is up here. Uh, so we've got uh, 0.164 litres of ethanoic acid in a litre of the solution. Uh, and so that, because it's uh, that's a one litre, so that's 16.4% ethanoic acid, uh, which is quite concentrated uh, in this original solution. Okay, so that's just an example um, using a titration curve potentially or potentially not. Uh, so make sure you do lots of those practice questions too.